Hi everyone, you're watching Mastering Your Inner and Outer Beauty on Jay-Z TV Live. I'm Janet Zipper, I'm a life coach, motivational speaker, red carpet host, TV show host, radio host, <laughs> and this is my beautiful co-host Lori Hart, and Lori is <laughs> Queen of Transformation and Beauty, also dream coach and hypnotherapist and life coach and here to make your dreams come true. Yes, absolutely. So we're so excited tonight because we have a couple of topics that we're going to discuss that we feel are so important for our viewers out there. So um, I'm going to let you start. So ladies, how many, and gentlemen who are watching, how many of you recognize this? <laughs> Is this your friend? Or is this your foe? Right? How many of you look in the mirror and go right to the things that you don't like? Or how many go to the mirror and say, I'm beautiful, I'm love, I'm happy, I'm joy? Or how many of you look like, oh, I never saw that little pimple there? Or what about this little brock head? Or what about the hairs on my nose? Well, they usually should really get rid of them, but <laughs> all, all kidding aside, you know. Are you looking at yourself through a clinical, critical lens? What is that lens that you see yourself? It's so important to master who looks back at you when you look in the mirror. Who is that person talking to you? That's so true. What do you see when you look in the mirror? It's so key. If you're constantly pointing out your flaws and not, you know, really taking note of the beautiful things about yourself, you know, some people have beautiful eyes and they don't even notice that because they don't like their nose or the same thing when they, you know, they criticize their lips or, or they don't like their cheekbones and they have, you know, beautiful other features. So, you know, it's sad that we focus on the things that we don't like about ourselves instead of focusing on the things that are good about ourselves. It's And it's something that as we grow up that, you know, we are taught as well because growing up, you know, what do you do? You're, you're, you know, you're around people and they said, oh, you know, you're, they'll criticize and say, oh, you know, I don't like your nose or you don't, you know, have pretty eyes or they'll say something about us and then we take well, it do, to heart. Do they really say that to you or is it just that we interpret? You know, it's actually, I think both, you know, growing up, you know, unfortunately, we live in a society that is just hung up on looks. I mean, look at the TV, look at the magazines. You know, with, but a lot of people don't realize is a lot of people are airbrushed, and it's not oh true. Oh, my God. I worked in Hollywood, and right? especially on Playboy. <laughs> and when I saw how neurotic those playmates were, boy, I thought, there's no hope for me. <laughs> but seriously, when we were growing up, you know, I thought my mother and father were being really critical. And I took everything so seriously and yeah. personally. And in retrospect, when I look now back as an adult, everything they said to me, I would like to think that they thought that they were trying to help me for my well-being. They weren't really trying to criticize us. Right. We took it that way. That's right. And we yeah. interpreted it as not feeling like we were enough. But, you know, I have a lot to say about my parents, but I'd really like to believe that anything they said to me when I was younger was in their hearts, was for my own good. Don't you remember that? It's for your own good? Yeah. You know, they did the best they can. Yeah, they did the best they could with what they had. But, you know, it's so important for you to really think about what it is that you see when you look in the mirror. You know, do you hate looking in the mirror? Uh, it, some people, I know some people who don't even like to look in the mirror because they hate what they see. So when something like that happens, that means that you need to do some inner work. Because if you don't like what you see in the mirror, that means that you're not happy with your life. You're not happy where you are. And I think that no matter what, whether you, do, whether you are beautiful, whether you are handsome, if you don't like something about yourself internally, it's going to, you know, show on the outside. Because happiness starts on the inside. It's an inside job. Not anything else is going to make you happy. You know, you, you could have the best, you know, clothes, the drive the best cars, have the most beautiful home, have uh, an, am an amazing spouse. But if you're not happy on the inside, they're not going to make you happy. That Those things aren't going to make you happy. So if you start with you, it starts with you. And you have to make yourself happy. Exactly. You know, it's an inside job. 
Absolutely true. So, you know, a lot of people think that if they just change the way that they look, they'll be happy. But you know what? You have to start loving and accepting yourself just the way that you are and figure out what it is that, you know, why is it that you don't like the way that you look? What is it that you don't like about yourself? Is it something that's even true or valid? Because a lot of times we think that the things that we think are actually fact when there are no, there's no evidence to support it. And, you know, working in the movie industry and working with all these beautiful A-list celebrities and, and playmates and actresses, you know, they were really insecure about themselves, too. So we yeah. think, oh, my God, they're so <laughs> confident and they're so beautiful and they have everything. Well, you know what? You hear stories. They don't have everything. Right. They lead a very lonely life. Mm. And unless they really go to life to be in service and help others, if it's all about you and what you look like, right. you have too much attention on that. Yes, let's be real. Beauty is important. It affects how you feel. Yes, it it affects how you feel and how you carry yourself throughout the day. And it gives you a certain amount of confidence. And you can emit a certain frequency because you feel better. Yes. But if you feel that badly about yourself, one, you got to do the inner work because there's no escaping that. Yeah. And two... Help somebody who has less than you. Go to gratitude. Yeah. You know, it took me till I think I was 34. I was always the shortest. I was horrified by that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Now, I love being little. Yeah. But I think it was because everything was always at a reach up. And everything always felt like it was outside my reach. And one day I was at a personal growth workshop. And two people actually bent down to my height and hugged me. I don't know. It changed my world. Wow. Everything seemed <laughs> like it wasn't so far away. And you know what? Physically, everything is far away because I'm, a, you know, kind of a midget. <laughs> <laughs> but they say good things happen to sm in small packages. And That's we're right. two little small yeah, fries. Exactly. And there's nothing small <laughs> about either one no. of us. You know, we have bigger than life personalities yeah. and bigger than life joyfulness and and we're happy with ourselves. Would we love to change certain things? Of course. Would we want to enhance certain things? Absolutely. Is there something wrong with that? No. Be your best so yeah. you can do your best and feel your best. Do whatever it takes to get to that state. You know, when we change ourselves it's because we yearn for the feeling that it's going to give us. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we feel that way? And make ourselves feel. So feel grateful for mm -hmm. the place that you're in. Because, you know, I used to have a boyfriend who would always run after goals. And I would say, you know, it's great to have goals. And it's important to aspire to have the next level. But if you're never happy right. with where you get, then your next level, you're not going to be happy there either. So, so again, you have to have that inner peace. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with wanting more. Yeah. If, as long as it's for a thirst of learning and growing and contributing, but if you're running after something to make you feel enough, yeah. it's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. No, when you when you love and accept yourself, you become powerful, and there's nothing that you can't do. Because that's where your power lies, and that, and that's where the happiness is. When when you have that happiness, there's nothing that you can't do. You know, s people that are happy attract good things in their life. I mean, how many times have you walked into a place and you see someone and they're in a bad mood? The first thing you want to do is you want to stay away from them, <laughs> right? When someone's not putting out a good energy, <laughs> right? you want to go... Right. So imagine if you're happy, you walk into a place, everyone's going to want to hang out with you. Everyone wants to be around you. And that when you have that happiness that comes from within, it shines from within you. You can't hide it. It's like you have this light that comes out of you. So when you look in the mirror and you're unhappy, you know that you need to do some inner work. And I think that it's 
for me, I've all, I'm always striving to be a, a better person than I was yesterday. So there's no perfect person on this world, and there never is going to be. But you know, you can always strive to be the best you can. So if you know that you aren't happy with who you are and where you are, then s just set some time aside to do the inner work. It takes time, but everyone has time. I mean, some people say, oh, I don't have time to do this because I work. But then they go home and watch TV. They sit on the couch and, and what? Watch Eat TV. Eat bun, buns, and popcorn. Right, watch c TV for a couple hours. Everyone has time. But you have to make it a priority, and you have to love yourself enough to do it, to say, hey, you know what? I deserve this. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to have a better life. I deserve to do things that are going to better the kind of person that I am. So you do have time. It just has to be a priority. And you have to make yourself a priority. I know Absolutely. for years I never even made it on my list. Yeah. I'd really like to be at the top of the list. I'm not quite there. <laughs> I'm still a work in progress. But, you know, sometimes if you don't have time for the inner work at that moment, then think of something that will make you feel good because they say if you do something to feel good, then you're going to feel good. So for me, I put on great music yeah. or I go on Facebook and I go to the puppy pages or I put on some great music and I start dancing and I take myself out of that negative Nelly space. Yeah. <laughs> they say exercise is a form of endorphins. Yeah, that is. Well, it's not one of my favorite things. But actually, I'm changing my mindset because now I've just started swimming again because I decided that I want to feel strong. Yeah. You know, the little decisions that we make when we're younger, like I always felt like, well, never going to have a good enough body, so why bother even try? Right. And so I felt really stupid in that gym uniform and... The only reason I passed gym was because I passed all the written tests. Right. But I felt really awkward in my body. And you know what? Sometimes I still feel really awkward in my body. <laughs> but the thing that I like about getting older is you learn to play with life. Yeah. And the things that you hated when you were younger, you have a better connection with yourself. You have a, an, an acceptance. Would I like to get rid of my stomach? Well, I tried that with liposuction. That didn't work out very well. <laughs> so now I attempt it with, with watching how I eat and what I eat and taking better self-care. Do I sometimes splurge? Absolutely. You still have to live. You know, it's it so true what Lori is saying. And, you know, just take the time to really love yourself and do whatever it takes to get to that point where you can look in the mirror and say, you know what, I love the person that I am. And I accept myself just where I am right now. We can all strive to become better people, but like I said, it's a choice. You have to take time for yourself and make it a priority. And that's just a really important thing to do. Everyone needs to do that. Absolutely, every day. Every day, you know, I wake up in the morning every day and I say to myself, how can I be a better person today than I was yesterday? Impossible. You know, I mean, I, I, ha I have things that I look at, like whatever I did yesterday. So I'll say, you know what? Yesterday, this bothered me. So what can I do today to make sure that something like as trivial as whatever it was is going to not bother me today? Because you know what? We're in control. We get to choose how we react and respond to things. We get to choose how we live our life. Every day we are creating a new day. So you get to choose the kind of day you're going to create. So you can bring whatever happened yesterday forward, or you can choose to let it go and, and create a new learn, day. You can learn from it. Exactly. And you can do it differently. And what I love is that you get to recreate That's yourself. Right. And if you want yourself to be one way, then you create that way. As long as you're doing it in an, an authentic way. I'm not saying yeah. that you put on a facade. We were talking before about the facades that right. we wear. <laughs> and it's so important. Authenticity. People can, can tell when you're not being real. Yes. That's so true. You know, people put on a mask and they're afraid to show themselves and be vulnerable. And, uh, you know, it's, I've been on, on media for a, a couple of years. And I remember when I first started doing videos, uh, I was afraid to be myself because I thought, people aren't going to like me. But then I, but then I remember 
someone telling me, well, you know what? Not everyone's going to like you anyway. You know, there, there's going to be people right. out there, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, they're not going to like you, so just be yourself. <laughs> and just and then have a better picker. You know, there was a book when I read when I was younger called How to Choose Your People. Just get smart. Right. The people that make you feel good, that support you, that enrich you, that encourage you, hang around those. And the people that are critical and make you feel less than, you know what? We have a committee in our brain. Yeah. We don't need to give anybody else power to make ourselves feel badly about ourselves. We do it ourselves. Yeah. So why would we choose a man or a woman or a friend or a brother or a sister or a parent to have that kind of power to make us feel badly? Right. We do enough ourselves. Right. Well, we have enough uh, chatter in our in our heads. And, and you know, the, th the interesting thing about that is a lot of the... Uh, things that we say to ourselves are so mean. We have uh, so, I mean, I remember just when I was younger, I would tell myself, God, you're stupid. And I'm thinking, and then now I look back and I'm thinking to myself, gosh, you know, I used to say that to myself a lot. And then I realized how powerful words are and how it would make me feel after I said it to myself. And I really thought I was stupid. And you know what's funny? is uh, I took an IQ test when I, you know, what was it, about 10, 15 years ago. And I, I didn't realize that taking the IQ test and realizing how uh, smart I was really changed the way that I looked and viewed myself. And, I, and it wasn't, you know, something that was um, vain or anything. I actually t I had to take this test because it was court ordered for my divorce that I was going through. And it was something that I had to do. So the lady told me, I don't think you know how smart you are. And she said, you know, your, your IQ is high enough to be a scientist. So, and I thought, really? And because I used to always tell myself how stupid I was. And I believed it. So you know what? I would act stupid time at times because I thought, well, I'm stupid. So it's incredible how the chatter in your brain affects your life and how you begin to play out your life depending on what you're telling yourself. And it's not even true. These things aren't even true. There's no facts. There's nothing to support it. But we decide that, oh, it must be true because I said it, right? Right. Or someone, or else, someone else that we yeah. gave power and credibility to. Yeah. But you know what? They're struggling just like you are with their inner world. So if they're picking on you for something, chances are they feel inadequate about themselves yeah. about the same thing. Because if they see it in you, they see it in them. Yeah. And so it's probably all a mix up. It's probably none of it's true. And yet they have to feel superior by putting us down. Yeah. And then we buy it. And then we shrink. Yeah. And then we make decisions <laughs> from a shorter place. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, Janet. Yeah. I can't afford to be any shorter. <laughs> well, we're both 4'11", aren't we? Uh, I say before, I was 4'11 before menopause. I think you're oh, a little I taller think you than might me. might be a little taller. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's the thing, like Laurie was saying, um, you have to just love and accept yourself the way that you are. And the loving and accepting yourself includes changing the inner dialogue, changing that chatter that you tell yourself, and just, you know, telling yourself that you are enough that you are valuable and worthy just the way you are. And that's it. And then the other thing is, we put so much importance in I and me. Get out of your own way. <laughs> it's not all about us. How about helping somebody who has less than yeah. you? How about helping a child that needs something? I know I can't wait to do mother-daughter events to, to, to merge at the point where mothers and daughters start to separate. When girls, I know when I was like 15, 16 years, I was so grown up, I didn't need a mother. I knew it all. <laughs> well, you know, my mother died when I was a teenager, and I never got to grow up with her. And as I get older, I kind of miss her more and more nice. because I realize the value of how much she tried to be there for me instead of resenting right. how I thought she felt about mm -hmm. me. She mostly acted that way because she wanted me to have the best, and she didn't want me to have the pain that she had growing up. Right. So her insecurities led her. I remember once I was at a country club, 
and I wanted an ice cream bar, and she humiliated me and said, no, you can't have it because I was chunky. And I felt horrified. Yeah, I can And that really set the stage of me not feeling good. Mm -hmm. She was really only looking out for me. She wasn't trying to make me feel badly about myself. But I interpreted it that I was fat and right. dumpy and not attractive. Yeah. And then it made me feel badly. She was just trying to help. But I didn't know at that point. And you don't know either what somebody's intentions are. Yeah, that's very true. Well, one thing that I always tell people is you can't take things personally, what people say to you. Because if you do, then you're going to have a terrible time in life because you, those people are going to have power over you. And every little thing that is told to you or said to you, that's going to devastate. You're going to, it's going to devastate your day, your life. So, you know, learn to not take things personally. Just keep moving forward and just say, well, you know, <laughs> they're just having a bad day and it's not about me. It's about them. <laughs> that's it. That's well, it. And I, I don't know about <laughs> you, but in my bathroom, I have different, not that affirmations work, but sometimes you need a little kick in the butt <laughs> to remind you, you are enough. Yeah. You are beautiful. <laughs> you are wonderful you are good spirited you yeah. are loved you have a big heart all the things you are smart so many women think they're not smart and they've been sold a bill of goods that yeah. some white knight is going to rescue us right. well you know what i haven't seen too many white knights have you <laughs> no <laughs> not i do all. my rescuing for myself yeah. yeah 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 so it's true you know just when you look in the mirror just love and accept yourself and that's the best thing that you can do. And if you do need to do some inner work, then do it. You know, don't make any excuses and go do it. You know, uh, we wanted to talk about a couple different things today, and that was one of them. So we want to talk about something that is really important because it affects so many people, and that is sun. 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 So, sun is such an important thing in our life. It creates the energy for the earth. Yes. It's the light that ignites our cells. It makes the grass grow and the flowers grow and it enhances so much life force. But with the good comes the bad. And one yeah. of the reasons I wanted to talk about this is there's such a pre- conceived idea about sunscreen and sunblock and what's good and what's bad and I did a procedure on somebody the other day and her skin was red and irritated and she wanted to use a sunscreen now a sunscreen has a number over 30 or a 50 or um, if it has anything in the ingredients that are anything other than zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, it's a chemical. And right. the difference between a 30 and a 15 is really only 4%, believe wow. it. It really just determines how much longer you can be in the sun. Now, that being said, we want to protect ourselves from the UVV, B as in burning rays. Okay, okay. so we really... <laughs> know that there are a lot of people now the sun you know with global warming the sun is getting hotter and hotter and hotter so the prime time to stay out of the sun and that includes the winter yeah. all whether it's raining because just because it's overcast or raining the sun's still there That's right. so you want to really be mindful to stay out of direct sunlight between the hours of 10 and 3. that being said it's still really important for your skin and your body and your eyes to get vitamin D. So you need to be in the sun 20 minutes a day, even without your sunglasses. Now, when I first heard that, I flipped out. I went, <laughs> I am not, you know, and I told myself, oh, my eyes, I have green eyes and my eyes are sensitive to light and they may be. So I choose to drive to work in the morning when it's not so bright or later in the afternoon and I take my sunglasses off mm -hmm. because you really need good, healthy vitamin D. 
And I don't care what they tell you. You can take vitamin D in a supplement. But the best vitamin D is by being outside. Yes, that's so true. I was told that, too, by... Uh, uh, Someone in that, when I lived in New Jersey, and they said, you need to have at least 15 or 20 minutes of sun a day. And, and that's it's so good for you. And, and also, too, it makes you feel good. It's so good. It turns on your cells, and it feeds your yeah. body, and it makes your body alive, and gets your, your cells communicating to each other. That being said, let me talk about stuff that's really important. Yeah. So my favorite sunblock is from DNA. It's a 28 sunblock. It protects you from UVA and UVB. What I love about this particular sunblock, it is reef safe, so it doesn't have any damage to us or the coral, the reef. Right. It's very reef safe. You want to be mindful of everything right. that's on the ocean because the water is getting compromised. The other thing that's great about this product is it has to be diluted. So, you know, you've tried those zinc oxides and they're so white and yeah, they just right? look, look like, like you. Ew, the awful. <laughs> just put a little bit on. I dilute it with some water mm -hmm. and I, it spread. That being said, with a regular physical sunblock made out of titanium dioxide and, I, and zinc oxide, it's really important that you have to keep applying it. If you're not applying right. it every two hours, you're not protected. Right. So right. one of the things that I love that you don't have to worry because I'm pretty lazy. I want to <laughs> kind of put it on and get out. <laughs> so I make this mineral makeup that's tinted. So you can see it comes in colors. So I can make eyeshadows and blushes and bronzers and foundations and lip glosses and you can dust it on and it'll be on all day before we went on camera we custom made a mineral base for Janet yep. you can see it's she beautiful. looks radiant <laughs> you can't see it my motto is if you look made up we screwed up right <laughs> so I love that isn't that if a you, great if motto you look made up you screwed up <laughs> and then huh. I love this mm -hmm. particular from color science because the minerals are in here and it uses a sponge tip applicator because when I'm in the car, I can use it to mm -hmm. protect my hands. Right. They say the sign of a woman's age is Art. from her hands and her neck. Very true. So you can use this on your neck. You can use something like this. I, I'll keep something like this in the car. Or I use something like this. This is a more of a zinc oxide tint that you can use on the back of your hands. Sometimes I actually have little gloves that I wear in the car when I'm yeah. driving where I cut out the fingertips. You know, I'm not that neurotic about my age, so thank God. I was, I was more neurotic about my age when I was younger. Right. So thank God I have enough acceptance, but you really want to be mindful. And then I also love, this is a wonderful sunblock that I love because you see how light it is. It's kind of like, goes it's like, like liquid. sheer. It's so right? sheer. And it's titanium, but, you know, something that has less coverage, you just have to be mindful that you have to apply it a little bit more often. Yeah. And what I love about the mineral makeup is that you can be in the ocean swimming or at the gym exercising, sweating your ass off. It doesn't run. It wow. doesn't move. It stays put. As long as you don't get out of the water and take a towel and wipe it off, you just blot it. It's still, it's still there. You might want to just touch up a little to make sure that you don't sweat it off. But it's long-lasting until, and it's even great for acne. Uh -huh. Well, it's incredible because the mineral makeup is, uh, all, you know, the sunblock. And so it protects you from the sun. So I wanted to also touch on sun damage because I know a lot of people who have gone out in the sun and, and they've gotten burnt. They've gotten, you know, they, they go out and... They could fight. I mean, I remember back in the 70s, people used to slather on mineral oil and go oh, out. Baby oil, maybe iodine, oil. and a reflector. We right? used to bake with the <laughs> aluminum foil. Give me more. Give me more. Right? <laughs> it's like, so I want to talk about, so what are uh, some of the things that happen when people do that? You know, because I know there's a lot of damage that happens to your skin when you go and do something like that. So do you see, we both have a lot of luminosity to our skin. 
because we haven't we've been mindful about taking care of our skin but you could tell those people that have the you know perennial tan where their skin starts to look like leather right. dried right. out and wrinkly it loses its vi vitality it loses its moisture and moisture is one of the most critical things that our cells need yeah and you think it's a big misnomer that by drinking a lot of water you're hydrating your cells not necessarily so one way is to really be mindful. You know, there's so many things that we can do to look tan. I know we love looking tan because right. it makes it's us look radiant. healthier. Right. And, you know, right. I can custom blend a bronzer. But one of the things I hate about bronzers is you, they usually look so orange. Right. They just People look so look fake like and orange. Orange. I, just, I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> but then the other thing is um, people are using products that are thinning their skin and then the sun encourages pigmentation, so then you get brown spots. So now you have shoe leather skin and you have brown spots. You know, when I was growing up, I had freckles. Now, freckles are a sign of youth and cute. Right, me too. I had freckles too. And I used to, I used to love my freckles, but then with using glycolic acid, I don't know, I got rid of them all. So there are different peels and there are different um, bleaching serums that are safe. Now, this is really a pet peeve of mine. So we go to the doctor and we say, okay, what do we do about these brown spots? And a doctor who generally does not know, and I'm sorry to put anybody's profession down, but most doctors do not know that hydroquinone is a toxic ingredient that they use to lighten your brown spots. Mm -hmm but it is toxic to your body, it is toxic to your liver, it causes blue-black lesions that are irreversible, and it is really harmful to your health. Yeah. Okay. So there are things, I just found out that kojic acid, which was supposed to be something healthy, is not healthy. It's a hormone and endocrine disruptor. Right. And just because something is natural doesn't mean it's healthy right. or when it mixes in your body's chemistry that your body is going to receive it yeah. well. That's so true. And you know, the skin is the largest organ in your body. And when people think about their skin, they think about what they see, the skin that they see. But your skin is actually thick. I mean, it it's covers your bones, and your, your, organs. your organs, your skin is all of that. But most people, when they think of their skin, they just think about what they see. Like, and you know. Skin is a barrier, but it's also a carrier. Yeah. And you're carrying all that, those toxins around your cells that are getting into your cells. Yes. One of the reasons that I love microcurrents so much and we'll, we've mentioned it before, and we're going to be talking a lot about microcurrent, especially when we start doing demos. But microcurrent is one of the ways that we actually can get hydration to our cells. Yeah, it's, a, it's incredible. So there's you know, other things you can do to, um, that are safe and that aren't going to be toxic to your body. And it's really important to take note of what you're putting on your body. You know, I read everything that I put on my body because there's some of the, the things that I see, you can't even pronounce them. And then I Google everything. So I think, what is this? And sometimes when I Google an ingredient, even though I'm not buying the product, I'm seeing what's on the shelf and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, someone's actually going to put this on their skin and it's going to be absorbed by their body and those toxins are going to end up in your organs. And, you know, use something once or once in a while, I wouldn't worry. Right. But if there's an ingredient that you're using in one of your products every single day over time, not so good. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's like anything. It's going to cause some type of reaction, whether it's going to be some kind of illness or, or rashes. I, you know, I remember when I was uh, younger, I used to suffer from horrible psoriasis and what I, you know, and I kept getting creams from the dermatologist and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, why do I have this horrible psoriasis? And it was so embarrassing because I had it on my hands. My hands were cracking and peeling, my elbows and everything. And come to find out, you know, I was using um, a face cream 
and also a body cream that had these ingredients in it that was causing the psoriasis. It was an allergic reaction. My body was automatically reacting to it. So, you know, sometimes we don't realize the things that we put on our body are actually causing us harm. You know, I, I have been wearing a, um, a shower gel. I can't even tell you, embarrassing how many years <laughs> I take. It's my shower gel. It's the same scent as the cologne that I wear. And now that I know that it's bad, I've stopped. And I have it stored up in bulk. But now I think twice. That has been the hardest thing for me <laughs> to get rid of is my shower gel. Yeah. Because I don't want soap to dry me out. Right. I don't want to smell like essential oils. You know, <laughs> I, I want to smell clean. And I always felt clean and fresh and sexy or sassy with the shower gel. And I've even stopped wearing my perfume. Or if I do wear it, maybe I'll stick it on my hair or I'll stick right. it on my clothes. But I've actually really, that's really been the hardest <laughs> thing for me to give up. Yeah. Is because that's, I'm attached to it. Right. I love the smell. Yeah. I love people telling me I smell so good. Men and women stop me. Oh, you smell so good. Right. <laughs> and of course, you know, it makes me, but if it's not good, then I'm being a hypocrite. So yeah. I have to let it go. Yeah. So, you know, we have to be careful of taking care of yourself and being aware of what you're putting on your skin, what products you're using, whether it's something that you're putting on your face, on your hair, makeup. You know, there's like alternative things. Like this is natural. This is, these are minerals. And minerals from the minerals earth. From the earth. Oh. How, you know, how much more natural can you get? And they just, and not only that, they protect you from the sun. So there's other things that, you know, there's things out there that you can use that are going to be good for you. And also, the, it has a dual purpose. It makes you look good and uh, it also and protects it you. <laughs> you. It keeps you vital and right. healthy and youthful looking. <laughs> Absolutely true. So, you know, there's other things. So, if you have any questions or if you want us to discuss any topics, you know, that's what we're here for. We're doing this show so that you can gain a whole bunch of information, that you're going to learn something when you watch this show. There's going to be products that we're going to show you, and there's going to be treatments we're going to talk about, and we're going to get into doing actual treatments as well. So please put your comments in the video section and below the video because we want to hear from you. This show is for you, and we created this show because we really want people to know uh, this information so that you can have a better life. And we want you to know what's the truth, too, not just salesy. Right. You know, you go into a department store. There is a reason that department store is the front department when you walk into the department store. Did you know that that <laughs> cosmetic and beauty department is the largest grossing revenue department of all the departments yeah. combined because people inherently don't feel good oh you want a makeover oh you want a makeover right. and how many times have we sat down at that makeover counter and then in bad lighting i will say and then you go out to your car and then you look at yourself in the mirror and you go ah, i look like a hooker <laughs> So when you are making yourself look beautiful, one, be mindful, check yourself in good lighting. And if you think you look terrible, chances are it's bad lighting or a bad angle right. or bad thinking. Right. <laughs> it's usually one of those three things. Absolutely. I always show a client of mine a picture because I have recently had a treatment done to my neck and she said to me, don't show anybody that picture. You have a hole in your neck. And then I took, turned my head she goes, oh, it looks so much better. And I go, it's all angles and lighting. And then we make these decisions about how we think we look based on bad lighting. Yeah. And never judge what you look like in the bathroom when you have overhead shadows right. creating <laughs> dark shadows. Right. Do you notice that we're front lit? We're not letting anything over our head create shadows. Yeah. We don't need more shadows than we have already. Right. <laughs> so really, go outside. And check yourself in natural light. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And put a smile on your face because you look much better when you're happy. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? I think the best accessory you can ever wear is a, is a smile. smile. So 
Thank you for watching, everyone, and stay tuned for our next show. And please, again, you know, whatever it is that you want us to discuss, please put those comments in the video underneath where it says comments. want to hear from you. And also, it's almost Thanksgiving, and then the holidays are coming up. If you have any questions on how to wear glitter, or how to yes. get your cheeks to glow, or how to get your lipsticks to stay on, or how to, like, isn't it wonderful to drink from a glass and not leave your trademark right. on someone? <laughs> so many tips. So please let us know what you want us to discuss, the topics, and we'll give you a shout out as well. We'll mention your name, unless you don't want us to. <laughs> but we'll definitely, we are here to answer your questions, whether it's on personal growth, whether it's on makeup, Whatever it is, skincare, skin care, or aging. aging, whatever it is. Well, everyone, we just thank you so much, and we are going to end our show now. So go out with a smile, right? Be happy. <laughs> Be happy. All right, and everyone. if you're not happy, do something to make you happy. Absolutely then you'll true. put yourself in the right vibration. Yes, absolutely true. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.